Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and I've been making soap for over 20 years. Today we're going to talk about soaps and specifically the labels that are on soaps. When you're making a purchasing decision to buy a bar of soap, you have a lot of different options. You can shop at a big box store like Walmart or Target. You can shop at a small handcrafted provider that you find on Etsy or maybe your farmer's market. But wherever you're shopping, one of the things that's informing your buying decision is the label and the ingredients that are on the label. So today I'm gonna to talk about that labeling. And I've divided this into a few different categories. First, we're gonna talk about big box stores and the soaps you typically find there. So the most common thing you're gonna find in one of those kind of bigger stores is two things. One, a beauty bar or something called a beauty bar, or two, something called a cleansing bar. In order for soap to be called soap by the FDA, it must have three things. One, it must be made by combining oils and lye or saponifying oils and lye together. Two, it must not contain any additional cleansing agents. And three, it must be marketed as only cleansing the skin. So let's take a look at this Dove Beauty Bar. And the first thing I see is there are no real oils in there. This is actually a mixture of surfactants and the main one being sodium lauryl isothionate. And that's a really gentle surfactant. It's derived from coconuts. This also applies to our Cetaphil, which is a cleansing bar. And it also uses surfactants as its main ingredients. In this case, it's sodium cocal isothionate, which you might remember from the bubbling bar tutorial for shampoo bars at Brambleberry. It's also a gentle surfactant. Neither of these bars will be called soap because they are made of surfactants. So that's why you see beauty bar or cleansing bar. On the flip side, this is Dr. Bronner's. You will clearly see the word soap on there because it is using the saponified oils of say coconut oil or olive oil. It's mixing sodium hydroxide lye with oils. So it can truly be called soap. The word sodium hydroxide can seem scary to some. Sometimes on handmade bars of soap or true soap, you'll see words like saponified oils of, or you'll see things like sodium olivate. What that means, saponified oils of or sodium olivate, is that that is what is the final product, meaning that refers to the sodium hydroxide mixed with the particular oil. In this case, olive oil plus sodium hydroxide equals sodium olivate. So another bar I want us to look at is this dial soap. So this claims to be antibacterial deodorant soap. So let's break that down. When a bar says it's a deodorant soap, it contains additional ingredients that supposedly help deodorize the skin. Now this of course is an ingredient that the FDA would consider to be either a drug or something that needs labeling. So there'll be an additional call out on the label saying what that active ingredient is. It also claims to be antibacterial, which means that it contains additional ingredients that supposedly eliminate body odor. So let's talk about that claim antibacterial. If you see a bar that says antimicrobial, antibacteria, or deodorant, it usually has an extra ingredient in there that the FDA has said, you know what, yes, this does kill germs and bugs and helps to deodorize. The FDA has also made it really clear that regular soap does all of that too. So if it were me, I would definitely just be buying regular soap so that you didn't potentially help create the next superbug by using something that specifically had a antibacterial, antimicrobial call out. So whether you choose to use a beauty bar, or a cleansing bar, or true soap, it's totally personal preference. Of course, as a handmade soap maker for over 20 years, I do think handmade is best made. One thing to keep in mind though, is if you're using a bar that's primarily made with surfactants, do your research on the surfactants because not all surfactants are created equal. Some might be a little drying to your skin or irritating. When shopping for soap, another thing that plays a huge role is how it smells. So first you look and see how it looks, then you look and you immediately go, hmm, do I like this scent? The way you often see fragrances labeled on your ingredients is under fragrance, perfume, or parfum. You usually won't see individual fragrance ingredients called out. And why is that? Fragrance oils fall under something called trade secrets. The Fair Packaging and Labeling Act says that if something is a trade secret, it does not need to be listed on the ingredients. Additionally, fragrance oils often contain a mixture of synthetic chemicals and natural ingredients like essential oils, but a lot of those ingredients have really long names that wouldn't necessarily be useful to you as a consumer to see 
anyways. Fragrance oils undergo strict safety scrutiny and actually have their own governing body that looks over and examines safety for fragrance ingredients. That governing body is called IFRA, or the International Fragrance Research Association, and they publish guidelines for safe usage for fragrance oils. Now, some people prefer a fragrance-free bar of soap, and so what do you look for when you want a fragrance-free bar of soap? You literally look at the label and you say, does it say perfume, fragrance, or parfum? Or does it have essential oils on there? And if it doesn't, you know that it's fragrance-free. A lot of times that is part of the brand identity for the bar. So for example, with Neutrogena, they put it right on the label. This is fragrance free. Often for children's products, for example, you'll also see fragrance free because sometimes people find fragrances to be a common allergen or something they just don't like on their skin. Now, if you are like, but I like fragrance, but I want all natural, look for essential oil call out on the label, but also usually on right at the front on the packaging because it is considered a marketing kind of angle. Like, in essential oil, makes it smell good, and it's all natural. So sometimes you'll see it on the front, but you'll also definitely see it on the label. And that's not a trade secret. So when essential oils are in your bar, they will be listed on the label. Sometimes they'll be listed in their natural form, so say lavender essential oil, or other times they'll be listed in their scientific name, so like lavender agostifolia. So speaking of ingredient callouts, an ingredient callout is something that's specifically highlighted on the main part of the label. So here, Lavender Dead Sea Mineral Soap. Clearly, they're telling us there's lavender essential oil in here and there's Dead Sea Minerals in here. Another specific ingredient call out that you'll see on the front isn't just like the lavender essential oil, it's also things like the oils that are used in the soap. So for example, this one right here has argan and shea butter and they clearly call it out because they want you to know it's there. This soap right here uses goat's milk they call it out because they want you to know it's there because this particular soap maker's belief is that it makes a better bar of soap. Or maybe you as a consumer know that that's what your skin really likes. The main thing to consider though is when you're looking at the ingredient label, where does that item, that particular call out from the front of the label, fall in the ingredient labeling deck? The way ingredient labeling works is that there's no percentages listed, but the FDA says that the label needs to have the ingredients used in descending order, meaning the first ingredient was used in the most and the last ingredient was used the less. So if you're trying to buy a bar of soap that uses say, ah, coconut oil, you're gonna want to see that higher in the ingredient listing rather than lower so that way you get the maximum amount of the product you really wanna see and use in your bar of soap. So when shopping for a bar of soap, brands will often try and convey what the bar of soap is. So things like healing, cleansing, nourishing, moisturizing. The FDA considers anything that you say is going to change the fundamental nature of skin to make it a cosmetic product that you have to actually back up the claims. So if you're doing anything but saying, hey, I'm cleansing, this, I'm cleansing your skin, the FDA is like, hey, prove it. There's another type of category though, that's a drug category. And so like for exist, it says it's an acne treatment. That means that this company has gone through a full protocol with the FDA to confirm that this actually will be effective. So this makes it a drug in the eyes of the FDA. It's no longer just a bar of soap. However, there are so many ingredients out there that have time tested hundreds of years of herbal remedies out there and lots of anecdotal reasons to use it and believe that it helps with a lot of different skin conditions. All that means is they haven't gone through the FDA process to make sure that their claims are completely verified. Doesn't mean they don't work, it just means they haven't gone through that full, very expensive FDA process to say that the product does what it says it's going to do. So now that we've talked over the very big basic concepts in labeling, let's go over a few of the bars I purchased as though I was shopping for them on a shelf just like you. So the first thing I see on this label is that they're calling out that it's lavender and neem. So that means I know how it's gonna smell. It's gonna smell like lavender and that it has neem oil in there. Now, if I know what I'm shopping for, I know that neem oil is gonna be supposedly good for oily skin, but they're saying it's good for all skin. It's got coconut oil, sunflower oil, purified water, and alkali. 
Remember how I said sodium hydroxide was scary to some people? They're using the word alkali to try and uh, showcase that there is a saponifying agent in here, specifically sodium hydroxide, but not using that scary term. Then there's castor oil and then lavender. So they have the lavender pretty high up on the ingredients list, which tells me that this is gonna be a strong smelling oil. They have other things like vitamin E, neem oil, Indian butter. So overall, when I look at this as a consumer, I go, huh, it's gonna smell like lavender and neem oil's ah, about sixth on there. I bet, I bet neem oil's in there in a decent amount. I see it's made in India. It has a lot of different things like vegan and rainforest friendly and gluten free on it. And so I'm like, oh, okay, I wanna try this bar of soap. So this bar of soap stands out to me because it's, first of all, yellow and clearly I like yellow, um, but it stands out to me because it's really clear on the label. What am I buying? It says I'm buying a bar of soap that's made in Tahiti. Right there, I'm pretty excited about that. It also says that it's made with Parfum Tiari. Remember how I said sometimes they call out fragrances on the call out? It's clearly there. So when I look at the ingredients on here, it's using the saponified word for their oil. So sodium palmate. That means it's got palm oil in it as the first ingredient. Sodium palm kernelate is the second ingredient. And then they move more into the palm acid, the palm kernel acid, and then water, glycerin, salt, and then the fragrance. So if I'm buying this for the fragrance, fragrance is always listed really far down. So that doesn't really concern me that much, but can I smell it through the box? I can't. Then they have the coconut oil and then they have the gardenia, uh, the gardenia flower in there. So when I look at this, I'm like, eh, you know, the active ingredient, the reason I'm buying this is for the, the Manoy oil, which is that gardenia oil and the smell, and I can't really smell it. I'm not so sure about this one. But then I see it says it's French milled, which means it's gonna be really hard and last a long time in the shower. So as a consumer, when I'm walking by this, it's really eye-catching, but I don't know that it has what I want in it because that Manoy oil is so far down on the bottom of the ingredients list. This one, so this one says that it has Dead Sea Mineral Soap and then it also has Argan Oil and Shea Butter. So it's made in Jordan, that's the first thing I see. So the first thing I think is authentic soap making technique because I see that. Over in the Middle Eastern countries, they often will saponify the oils and the lye together in giant, giant vats. And they'll literally use like almost brooms to sweep the oils and make them flat. And then you'll see entire rooms full of soap and made in the authentic kind of old school style way. Obviously, I can see from the shape of this bar, though, that that's not how that bar was made. But when I do see a made in Jordan, my first thought as a consumer is, oh, I wonder if they're making this in a more traditional way. And the label says that sodium palmate, so that's saponified palm oil, sodium palm kernelate, so that's saponified palm kernel oil, and then water. All right, so it's water and palm oil, basically. Then they've got glycerin added to it and the fragrance, and then comes the salt. So the thing I know as a consumer is remember, order of descending ingredients is the largest to smallest. So if the sodium chloride salt, which is one of the reasons I'm buying this bar for, is all the way down there, probably means it's not in there in that big of an amount. And then the, they go to the shea butter and then they go to the argan oil. So I know that those are really in there to be call outs on the label, but not necessarily in there enough to make a really big difference in the final bar of soap. It's still gonna be a great bar of soap because it is made naturally like saponified oils, but maybe it doesn't have exactly the qualities I was looking for based on the labeling call out on the front. This particular bar of soap is a shaving soap for women and it's called, it has raw goat milk skin therapy on it. So I know right away that one of the main ingredients is gonna be raw goat's milk. And so sure enough, the first ingredient in here is fresh raw goat's milk. And then the next one is extra virgin olive oil and then cocoa butter, coconut oil, rice bran oil, castor oil, honey, beeswax, zinc oxide, essential oils of orange and grapefruit. So right away, I know that the goat's milk, which is why I'd be buying this, is actually the first thing on there. So I know it's being used in a large amount. So as a consumer, like I'm reading this, I'm like, well, okay, I don't see sodium hydroxide on there, but clearly, because there is a little hole here, I can see this bar, of, this is a bar of soap, and I can actually smell it also, and see that it smells delicious. So overall, I'd say this, this 
particular label is really appealing to me because it has everything that it says it does on the front and it has it really high up in the ingredients declaration. So this bar right here is really appealing to me. It's bourbon. It's huge. It feels like they're definitely going for the dude soaps. Um, it says a portion of the proceeds benefit U.S. veterans. And as a consumer, you know, that's going to influence my buying decision. Yeah, this is 10 ounces. It's made in the USA, which I love. So then I go straight and I'm like, okay, where's my labeling? What is this bar of soap, right? Because that's how I'm going to make this decision. And so first thing is it clearly is a saponified bar of soap because it says sodium palmate, sodium cocoa, and then glycerin and fragrance. So what does that tell me? That says palm, coconut oil, water, glycerin, and fragrance. Okay, that's cool. And then comes the bourbon. So Buffalo Trace bourbon. So they really did put bourbon in there. And then sodium chloride, iron oxides, and then some water softeners. And so what that tells me, it's a pretty simple bar of soap. They've got the bourbon in there and they got the color from naturally derived iron oxides. So as someone that likes to, uh, likes to support nonprofits, right? Proceeds U.S. veterans and it's pretty yummy smelling and it's got the bourbon in there, I'm probably going to want to pick up this bar of soap because I know it's real soap. Now you know how to read labels and kind of what I'm looking for. And just know that when you have a smaller bar, a smaller maker or producer, they'll have the same exact things on there. So like, for example, this producer, uh, which I love her soap, she called out specifically the kale and clay that she uses in there. She makes sure that you know that she has cocoa butter in there because you can read it on the ingredients. This particular producer, I'm also love, I got this off of a small handcrafted website and she uses all natural ingredients and she makes sure to call them out and give you a full ingredient list as well. And she talks about the interesting things she does in here, like putting honey in and exactly how she formulates her soaps as well. So when you're looking at a label, make sure you're looking for where that ingredient that you really are buying that soap for falls on the label. Make sure you're looking for, hey, did they label it right? Like is did they leave anything out and then from there it's totally personal preference it, what falls in line with your values are you buying this because you love all natural are you buying this because of the charity are you buying this because you love to buy from women-owned businesses or do you just really want a great bar of soap that cleanses if you came to this video it's probably because you're curious about the ingredients in your soap and you know if you haven't tried making soap before can i suggest that to you you should try making soap there's lots of videos right here on this channel that could teach you how to make soap and brambleberry.com has many beginner soap making kits so you can get started making your very own soap and if you just came here because you're curious about ingredients and curious about labels i hope you learned something and i hope you buy your next bar of soap from a handcrafted soap maker until next time happy soaping